Something you can and should be doing on the longer notes that you're holding is adding direction in the long notes with the bow. And you can do this several different ways. You can change the tone, um, you can change the dynamics, and usually it's gonna be a combination of the two. So to give you an example, I'm gonna play that first note from the Bodicini Elegy, that long held G. So what I did there was a combination of changing the tone from fuzzy to more direct and changing the dynamic from softer to louder. And the way that I did that was I started a little bit closer to the fingerboard where the tension is lower and then slowly moved it a little bit higher, closer to the bridge, and then gradually added weight and increased the speed in the bow. And like I said, you can do this many different ways. That's an up bow, but you can do it in the down bow as well. And it doesn't have to be a crescendo. It could be a day crescendo and achieve the same effect. You just want some kind of direction, either pulling away or moving forward. That's gonna help a lot with the phrasing and help give the audience a sense of direction so they know what to be listening for and what to expect. Playing softly is something that can be incredibly powerful in the right moment. And I think most of us play just too loud all the time. And we're used to just trying to project, just trying to be heard over other instruments. But because of that, we don't really get to experiment that dynamic um, variation that other instruments can. And playing softly can be incredibly powerful in the right moment, especially if it's put in contrast with other kinds of emotions. So one of the things that I love to do is right after a super emotional moment, something where I'm playing really loud, really intensely, come way, way down, bring the energy all the way down, bring the dynamic level all the way down. And I find that what, the, what happens is the audience just sort of leans in a little bit. You know, that's the goal is that the, you want the audience to go and kind of lean in a little bit and pay attention to what you're doing. So to give you an example, I'm gonna play right at the beginning of the 4A Elegy. What happens is that melody right at the beginning happens two times. It happens once where it's really, really loud, and then the second time I like to come way, way down. And I'm gonna show you what I do. Uh... So like I said, that just adds a little bit of an extra emotion and it adds so many more options that we have with colors and dynamics and it adds a little bit extra you know, to the audience. Like I said, when you come way, way down, it makes the audience go, whoa, what is she doing? And lean in a little bit. So that's just something that I love to do. I love to play with the contrast between those two colors. Another kind of color change that I like to experiment with is playing on different strings. So in general, the higher the string, the brighter the tone you're gonna get and the more focused the sound. The lower the string, the fuzzier the tone and the more spread the sound you're gonna get. So you have a lot of different options for what you can do depending on what you want the tone to sound like. So to give you an example, when I'm playing Chartis, you have this melody at the beginning that happens twice. And it's a short melody, but Within that, at the beginning, they want you to play at piano, and then right after, either mezzo forte or forte, depending. And so what I like to do is, right at the beginning, I start that melody on the D string. And the reason I do that is because it creates that fuzzier, more spread sound, and I have a little bit more control over the lower dynamic level. 
And then when it happens again, I play it on the G string so that I can come up in dynamic level and I have a more focused sound. So then there you have that spread, more fuzzy sound, and then here, when I come over to the G string, it's gonna be a little bit louder, a little more, more focused. And so because of this, you have so many different options for where you can play each melody depending on what sound you want. And so this is just something that you can think about when you're deciding on where to play each phrase and how you want every single phrase to sound. Learning the techniques and perfecting your sound is obviously very important. But making creative decisions about your music is what makes the difference between just playing the notes and actually making music. So I hope these ideas were inspiring to you and I hope you can come up with some of your own ideas and your own playing.